Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnan K and today we discuss about the anatomy of cerebellum. So going to the introduction part of the cerebellum, it is otherwise known as small brain and it lies in the posterior cranial fossa and it lies behind the pons and the medulla and it is separated from the cerebrum by a fold of dura mater called as the tendorium cerebelli and it weighs 150 grams. So let's see where it is located with a simple diagram here. So I'm representing a hand-drawn diagram of the cerebrum, the medial surface and below that you can see the corpus callosum. This is the corpus callosum and here will be the brain stem. So the midbrain, pons and medulla and it continues as the spinal cord. And in center we have the ventricular system and I'm adding the cerebellum to the picture. So below here we have the cerebellum which is located behind the pons and medulla and it is located in the posterior cranial fossa that you will have studied in the cranium itself. There are three fossa, anterior cranial fossa, middle cranial fossa and posterior cranial fossa. So the cerebellum is located in the posterior cranial fossa. The external features of cerebellum includes it is divided into two parts that is the vermes and two lateral hemispheres. And the surfaces of the cerebellum includes superior surface, and inferior surface and on either sides the vermis is separated from the hemispheres by a paramedian sulcus so there is a sulcus which separates the vermis from that of the lateral hemispheres so that defines the paramedian sulcus then there are certain fissures and lobes which are present on the cerebellum so let's discuss them in detail so the fissures Subdivide the surface of the cerebellum into narrow leaf-like bands and they are named as folia. So the folia means a leaf-like structure. So narrow leaf-like bands are formed by the fissures on the surface of the cerebellum called as the folia. And if you take a section in right angles to these particular fissures, so then inside you can see there is a characteristic tree-like appearance called as arbor vitae. So that is a particular point to remember if you take a cross section and if you look inside it there will be a like tree like pattern that can be visible and that is termed as the arbor vitae. And some fissures are deeper and they divide the cerebellum into lobes and within which smaller lobules are formed. So the deepest fissures which you have to remember are the primary fissure or fissure prima which is running transversely across the superior surface. Then we have the posterolateral fissure seen on the inferior aspect. Then we have the horizontal fissure which divides the cerebellum into upper and lower halves. So these are the important fissures you should know which separates the lobes. So let's see that here. So I'm just drawing the central vermis part of the cerebellum here. This represents the central vermis part. Then I am drawing the cerebellum. So you can see the cerebellum here, the two hemispheres. And there are two major sulci that can be seen from this particular view. I am drawing them. The first one is the primary fissure. So here you can see this one is a primary fissure and in the middle you can see the second one that is the horizontal fissure which divides the cerebellum into an upper zone and a lower zone. And the posterolateral fissure will be coming here that can't be shown here so I am just marking it like this. You can mark it as the posterolateral fissure and the worm is you can see here which is having two tip points. I'm just drawing the tip. And from here, 
we have another lobe of cerebellum that is called the floculonodular lobe that will be discussed later so this is the basic idea of the cerebellum and how the lobes are separated here we have the anterior one that is the primary fissure or fissure prima which forms the anterior lobe of cerebellum then we have the horizontal fissure here which separates the cerebellum into an upper zone and a lower zone upper half and lower half here so these are the major fissures that you should keep in mind regarding the cerebellum so the lobes how they are formed the primary and posterolateral fissures divide the cerebellum into three lobes that is the anterior lobe the part that is anterior to the primary fissure then we have the posterior lobe or the middle lobe between the two fissures that is between the primary fissure and the posterolateral fissure is the middle lobe and we have another lobe that is a floculonodular lobe which is present on the inferior surface of the cerebellum so in the previous picture here you have the anterior lobe then we have the middle lobe and we have the floculonodular lobe here so these are the lobes that you should remember and morphologically it is again composed of this particular lobules smaller lobules they are the lingula central lobule culmen declive folium tuber pyramid uvula and the nodule so these names you can remember by putting some mnemonics and all so it is as per your choice you can make the mnemonics and connect them together so you can remember the names very easily so that can be used so here i am just representing the same with this rough diagram here so i am just drawing the vermis part this is the vermis part here and we will divide it into each parts as we have mentioned just before so the first one will be here then we have the second one third one fourth one fifth one sixth one and seventh one so i'm just naming them the first one is lingula the second one is central lobule the third one is the culmen the fourth one is declive fifth one is folium seventh one tuber then we have the pyramid then we have the uvula and below everything we have another one that is the last one that is the nodule so these are the further lobes that you have to study regarding the cerebellum so in the vermis you can mark them very easily and on the side you can mark the cerebellum as well the lateral hemisphere you can draw like this that is also fine so according to this only the cerebellum will be divided into further lobes the subdivisions of the cerebellum and in further subdivisions of cerebellum divides it into an archicerebellum paleocerebellum and the neocerebellum archicerebellum means that is the oldest part of the cerebellum which is formed during the genetical development so during the embryological development stage archicerebellum is the part which is formed first so it has got the name archicerebellum the term archi refers to the old one then we have the second one that is a paleocerebellum and the neocerebellum where the neocerebellum is the newest part so the archicerebellum has the function of maintenance of the body equilibrium while the paleocerebellum maintains the muscle tone and the posture and the neocerebellum is responsible for the fine coordination of voluntary movements so these are the functions of these subdivisions and the cerebellar cortex is composed of three layers there is an outer most molecular layer the second layer that is a purkinje layer 
then we have the granular layer and these three layers are composed of five types of neurons and they are the stellate cells basket cells purkinje cells granule cells and the golgi cells so these are the components of the cerebellar cortex then the cerebellar nuclei are composed of the dendrite nucleus emboliform nucleus and fastigial nucleus so the white matter of cerebellum it is consisting of two types of fibers there are intrinsic fibers and extrinsic fibers that is a gross classification and under the intrinsic fibers it gives connection between the different regions of the cerebellum either in the same hemisphere or between the two cerebellar hemispheres so that is the function of that what is the definition of the intrinsic fibers it connects different regions of the cerebellum either in the same hemisphere or of two different cerebellar hemispheres and examples are the projection fibers which are connecting between the cortex to the nuclei of the cerebellum then we have association fibers which connects between two cortical areas of the cerebellum between the cortex and cortex two different parts of the cortex and we have the commissural fibers which lies between the two hemispheres and the extrinsic fibers on the other hand it connects the cerebellum with other parts of the central nervous system for example the spinal cord cerebrum like that so the fibers which connects between the cerebrum and the cerebellum then the spinal cord and the cerebellum these are the extrinsic fibers so let's see what are the cerebellar peduncles so the cerebellar peduncles are various fibers entering and the leaving the cerebellum and these tuft of fibers forms three peduncles or three stalk like holding points and that is termed as the superior cerebellar peduncle middle cerebellar peduncle and the inferior cerebellar peduncle the superior cerebellar peduncle connects the cerebellum to the midbrain while the middle one connects to the pons and the inferior one to the medulla so these are the important stalks which connects the cerebellum to the midbrain pons and medulla so to the brain stem there is a direct connection between the brain stem and uh, cere cerebellum and that is possible through these three peduncles so i'll be showing you the three peduncles diagram of the peduncles so here i'm drawing the pons here midbrain pons and medulla and here we have the cerebellum so connecting between these i'll represent the superior cerebellar peduncle here this fibers represents the superior cerebellar peduncle that is connected to the midbrain then we have the middle cerebellar peduncle that is connected to the pons and finally we have the inferior cerebellar peduncle that is coming from the medulla so these are the three fibers that is the three peduncles the superior here we have the superior cerebellar peduncle middle cerebellar peduncle and inferior cerebellar peduncle so the final part that is the arterial supply of cerebellum it is composed of three arteries and they are the superior cerebellar artery the anterior inferior cerebellar artery and the posterior inferior cerebellar artery so let's have a look how it is formed so for that i am just drawing the picture here 
same all picture like uh, the representation of the cerebellum so first midbrain pons and medulla and here we have the cerebellum and uh, while explaining the blood supply of brain i have told you about the circle of willis and how it is formed we had two vertebral arteries they will join to form the basilar artery which goes all the way up into the cranium and from this the branches to the cerebellum arises so from the basilar artery the first one that is superior cerebellar artery that will be supplying the superior part of the cerebellum and we have the second artery that is the anterior inferior cerebellar artery which is also arising from the basilar artery so this one over here is the basilar artery and the first one was the superior cerebellar artery here then we have the anterior inferior cerebellar artery and from the vertebral artery another branch arises and that is termed as the posterior inferior cerebellar arteries so there are three arteries to remember i'll repeat there are three arteries supplying the cerebellum the first one that is the superior cerebellar artery then anterior inferior cerebellar artery and from the vertebral artery we have one branch that is the posterior inferior cerebellar artery so this defines the total anatomy of cerebellum thank you